Hello again. Welcome back and thank you so much for joining us. Let's take a look at this now. A recent story about a chief in Limbopo finding unwed mothers has caused quite a stir. Chief Pandelani Singo from the Mandala village near Toyando has since apologized and has pledged to stop forcing mothers with children out of wedlock to pay but he has vowed to continue finding those who marry outside of their village. Now, that figure was revised, uh, however, from about almost 3,000 rand to around 200 rand if you marry outside of that clan. Now, is this legal? Does it go against our constitution? Where do the powers of traditional leaders begin and where do they end? Let's discuss this now with uh, the uh, Secretary General or General Secretary of Contralesa, that is uh, the Congress of Traditional Leaders of South Africa. Uh, Chief Akoli Lendevu is here with us. A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and thank you very much for having me in the studio. My first question to you is what do you make of the actions of your counterpart in Limbobo? Well, um it's quite interesting. Uh, you know, what I can tell you, first of all, is that traditional leaders actually uh, doing their actions in council, they are never doing their actions alone as individual people. So it starts from there. Whatever you do as a traditional leader, you call the council, you discuss issues, and then you escalate that into a bigger community. That is where decisions are taken. So... I can't say that traditional leader was right or wrong, but I can say that if that decision becomes a decision of that particular community in Limpopo, then it's a decision of, of them. A little bit earlier, you and I were discussing this, and you said perhaps this is a way that the community is trying to curb um, you know, unprotected sex amongst youngsters you know, with the threat of if you fall pregnant and you're not married, we're going to find you. Or if you go and find someone uh, outside of the culture and he's not a, a man of good standing, then we're going to find you, that this was a preventative measure. But it seems rather unilateral of, of, of the chief for me because the money that was raised, he was unable to account for, according to newspaper reports about 150,000 rand that he's collected thus far through these fines, saying that they were going to go to upgrades of graveyards, etc. But he was unable to account as to where it, it has gone. It seems as if it was a unilateral decision to which he doesn't account. So basically my question is, do traditional leaders or chiefs um, have too much unbridled power? Uh, look, um, <clears throat> our powers are based... On, on, our system, on our traditional and customary systems, first of all. So whatever we do, we do on the basis of the fact that as that clan, as that community, we're in agreement. So that's how we actually uh, do our, our practice. So it, there's no way that I do all these things alone as an individual. So in this case, what could have been happening is that the council sat and then they discussed it, this and then they escalated to a broader community. And if it is a decision of, the, of that broader community, then they take a decision that says the money that we are going to raise out of this is going to do A, B, C, and D. If, 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 if them, by themselves, they say, no, the money that we are going to raise on this, we are going to build preschools. Uh, you know, the early childhood, early childhood development centers and all those things. It becomes their agreement. And then that money is spent at that particular uh, process. Mm -hmm. And then, the, in fact, they should have then established a committee mm -hmm. which will then take care of all what is going to take place. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily the traditional leader himself mm -hmm. who becomes the, at the helm of what is going to take place, but the, the committee. So, which, which will then say, we'll build a preschool, uh -huh. we'll build a clinic, we'll uh -huh. build a bridge, and this and that. Are the, are the, 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 the um, Abasali, the locals uh, in that community, are they able to voice their opinion once the council or once uh, the powers that be, including the chief, have taken a decision on this matter or any other matter? Am I able to say, you know, I disagree with the chief on point one and two uh, because of the following reasons? Do I have that voice? Because for me, if I have to run to the media in order for this uh, uh, to be changed, the chief has since uh, scrapped out that fine for unwed mothers and has reduced to the fine for those who marry outside. So it says it took the intervention of the media for there to be change. Are there mechanisms in place for one to disagree with the chief? 
You know, Ayanna, let me tell you this. The, our institution, our system, has been a democratic system since a day and age. Because all what uh, the, the, the royal leaders are doing, are doing it in council, and they do that in their communities, with their communities. So we've been practicing democracy for, for long ago. So there is no way that I can stand up as an individual and say, because I want A, B, C, and D, this is the way to go. I suggest, and the council decides, and then the community accepts the decision mm. and discuss it on the decision and accept the decision and actually reject the decision as well. I'm glad you speak about democracy and the constitution because that's where I want to go up next. This, yeah. of course, situation in Limpopo is just a case study. But yeah. uh, to broaden this conversation a little bit more, we can speak about a number of instances where mm. people will say uh, some actions of traditional leaders perhaps go against the constitution. Um, one such perhaps would be uh, the, 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 the virginity testing. And what some would say, no, this is an invasion of my privacy. As according mm. to the constitution, I have a right to privacy. Uh, your mandate here on the ground that suggests that I need to go for virginity testing is infringing on that right. That dichotomy that exists between, uh, you know, pronouncements by the chief and the constitution, let's speak about that dynamic. Look, Ayan, <clears throat> as, 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 as a traditional leader, you are actually a head of that particular clan, that particular community. So whatever decisions that are taken at the Lehutla, at that council, at that particular imbizu. Now you have a responsibility to implement that decision as the head of this institution. So, but because Abandu then see uh, Inkosi implementing the decision of the council, they would then take a, a, a perception that says Inkosi is actually enforcing us to do this. But in the actual fact, the Inkosi is actually implementing a decision of the particular council or the particular Lekhutla that was there and deciding on the matter. Mm -hmm. So, but then, because we are seen as people who are actually infringing other people's rights, mm -hmm. because we have a responsibility now to implement what was actually decided mm -hmm. on the big imbizu. Do you put that against the constitution and measure whether or not uh, it's legal? Do you check the legality of those moves or whatever the council decides and whatever the council uh, chooses, that's what must be impl in, uh, implemented regardless of, of whether or not it may infringe on other people's rights? Look, uh, we, 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 uh, we are never going against the constitution. We check the constitutionality of, 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 of every matter. And whatever we do, we are guided by the fact that the constitution pres prescribes mm -hmm. as such. But be that as it may, if that community in that, uh, the, in, in, in that particular area mm -hmm. is, in, is, in, in, is in agreement to say, this is what we want to see mm -hmm. as this community, mm -hmm. we have a responsibility to make sure that that community becomes satisfied on what they want to do and they mm -hmm. want to see. In this case, it might happen that that community sat and realized that Abandu and Ababo, they get pregnant early. And then they take a decision that says, no, for us to save them mm -hmm. from an early pregnancy, let us agree on doing A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. Hence, the chief then has a responsibility to implement the decision that was taken at the community level. I wonder if the men are also, or the young boys in this case, are also uh, given some sort of a fine for impregnating the young girl. Perhaps it damages. But because we're, we're running out of time now, but let's leave that question for a number, uh, another day and ask something that has been asked for a number of times, but I'm going to repeat it for the purposes of this discussion. What is the role and the use of traditional leaders today? We've got local government, provincial government, national government. Is it not a repetition? What is the need for um, traditional leaders? leaders and chiefs in 2015 South Africa? You know, we are talking about an institution that is the foundation of our African system. We are talking about an institution that is very, very old. So all these other systems are actually coming while this system is there because this system is actually a, it's, it's, you know, it's a birthright for me to be a chief. You understand? So 
This is an old, old system. So it has got a role to play in terms of ensuring that Abandu are still sti sti sticking to their value systems. Uh, Abandu, they still behave as human beings. And there's no ways that, uh, you know, uh, because we have to abide by the new systems mm -hmm. and then we allow people to do as they are pleased. You know, the fact of the matter is that we have to make sure that we preserve our uh, culture, our customs, our traditions. We have to make sure that we preserve our traditional value system, our African value system. So that is the role that we play. As well as traditional leaders, you find us in the rural communities. That is where we make sure that there's peace and stability there, there's development, there's everything. So that is our role. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us on this, your birthday as well, as you have <laughs> said to me. I know you could have been anywhere in South Africa, but you chose exactly. to spend at least five minutes of this day with us. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much Thank again. Thank you very much. Thank you. That is uh, yeah. Chief Koli Lindevu. He is uh, the General Secretary of Contralesa, speaking to us on a range of issues regarding traditional leaders and the Constitution or the rights of citizens. All right.